Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Professor Meg, and today we're reviewing Wormspan. Wormspan, designed by Connie Vogelman, uh, developed by Elizabeth Hargrave, art by, I'm sorry, I have to check this one, Clementine Campardo. I'm sorry, I don't know who you are yet, but you're still By Stonemeyer so. Games. And by Stonemeyer Games, and loosely mm -hmm. based on Wingspan. Mm -hmm. uh, loosely based in the sense that there's clear elements of Except Wingspan present here, but it's dragons, and there are a lot of gameplay differences. This is, it's got loose elements of similarity, and then lots of things that are very, very different. If you've played Wingspan, you'll, some of the concepts will be familiar. If you haven't played Wingspan, well, honestly, you're starting off without having to worry about all the things you need to remember or don't remember. Although, kudos to Stone My Games because they have one of those sections in the rule book where, like, here's what you gotta know if you've already played Wingspan. And I love it when companies do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so kudos mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go ahead, or do you, which one of us should uh, give them the quick overview of how the game plays? I can give the overview, but to be fair, uh, I would say by now I have played Wormspan more times than I've played Wingspan. Wingspan really? was a game I wasn't a huge fan of. I would say I've played it maybe twice. Um, and it's because I have a thing with birds. We're just gonna leave it there. I'm really sorry. It has nothing to do with the game. I have a thing about birds. So now that this is about dragons, I am so into it. But so Alex, you're gonna have to go over the differences because sure. I don't actually know the real differences. I'll do it. Um, I, yeah, I know that you're ro rolling a dice pool instead. I'll That's the only the thing I really know. Yeah. Um, but in Wormspan, you are building out, di excavating different caverns to entice your dragons to come live in your different caves, and they all do really special things for you. They're veg they usually take different things like meat and milk because they're hungry boys and girls, but they also like shiny things like gems and gold, and you'll use that to collect the different dragons, and your dragons will do, I think, four different things for you. So depending on the dragon you get, uh, they will provide endgame scoring. There are ones that when you walk through your caves, they provide different triggers. There are some that when you play them, they have an ability. And there are some that have a time clock that they happen at the end of the round instead. Um, so uh, the different dragons that you're playing will have those different things that they're providing for you. And they also have these little colored banners on them to show which caves they can be played into. But a dragon can only be played if they have a cave underneath to be able to play it onto. So you need the resources to be able to gain caves and then be able to build out and make your caverns. Um, and it's all just a resource management game where you are trying to gain the four different types of resources plus eggs. Eggs are used as a resource but also points at the end of the game. And you're using that just to get your little horde of dragonlings and then there is round scoring as well so each round you'll try to meet certain objectives and you'll be working toward them by the round so once this hatchling round is done those won't matter but you do know that shy dragons are coming up so you can build up toward the later rounds as well which are worth more points and on top of that for Wormspan there is this dragon guild track that you're playing with so all of the players have shields that are going around the track every time you land on the spots you get the different thing that's on them so eggs meat drawing a dragon card drawing a cave card etc but whenever you hit these middle spots you'll be placing a different token into the chart and I believe oh, I'm not I forget what those are called Alex but there are four different types guilds? of them guilds guilds is it lands though or something? Or it's just the types of guilds that we're playing guild as? Guild of Seafarers, Guild okay. of Explorers. You're right, you're right. Yeah. It's a little shiny, so I can't see it from here. Um, but so there are four of those for you to play with, and these goals, there's like a whole bunch of those tiles for you to swap out. And they're double sided. And, <coughs> and they're double sided. And apart from that, there's a, a bunch of cards here. So I would say in a general game, in a four-player game, we went through a lot of the cards because you're able to draw from the deck and do different things with the abilities that you get. But in a two-player game, we didn't go through all of the dragons. So um, there's in a definitely player, you will not a lot that you will see. Them. Well, we yeah. went through the whole deck. Did we? Yeah, we did by the very, very end. Really? Yeah. I guess so. Maybe. I don't remember that, but possibly. Yeah. Yeah. So to the differences between Wormspan and Wingspan. So going over the two games. I didn't games, say one other thing. Not that it super matters. This isn't a teach. This is a preview. I don't have to teach everything. But um, you are spending these coins every round for your action. So that's also your action economy is that you have six to spend and you can sometimes gain more. But different things will cost different coin points. Um, and you're using those to use all of your actions. Cool. The difference between Warspan and Wingspan. I may not cover all of them, but I'll try to get the main ones that stick out at me. First of all, you just mentioned the coin, so we'll lead off of that. A game of Wingspan and Warspan will both, both take place over four rounds, but in Wingspan, you start with eight actions and slowly decrease down eight, seven, six, five. Versus in Warspan, you simply have six actions every single round represented by these coins, and there are ways to get more coins from various actions, so you can try to feed into a loop of getting a few more items. Do you the get guilds, extra actions in Wingspan? You, Wingspan? I don't believe so. 
you just have eight, like, seven, six, five. Is there something that gives you? I don't extra recall actions. there being extra actions, but while I have played Wingspan maybe five, six times, for example, times, it's been there a while. are some games that you play that give you an extra coin. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have the Dragon Guild. The guilds are going to be an entirely new concept. So there's gonna be four different guilds in the base box over here. And when I say base, there currently only is the base box. But you're gonna have four different guilds, and you move around these tracks, and that gives you different guild benefits to get. Uh, in Wormspan, you are moving left to right over here. In Wingspan, you're moving right to left. Meaning both games give the opportunity to explore your caverns. That as you play cards, you get more of our bonuses when you explore that row. But you're moving left to right in one, right to left in the other. The small nuance change as far as how they operate. Uh, you're going to have, well, the cards themselves are going to have hatchling cards. They're going to be an interesting concept within Warspan as far as a specific type of card that specifically benefits when you go on top of it and give you some bonuses. The idea of having these caverns as something to play into your ca into your caverns before you have to play, before you can play a card, that's something that's new to uh, Warspan in general. And there's a lot of small adjustments as far as general quality of life changes to the way the rows operate, the bonuses they give, the slight diversity of bonuses. So it's a little bit more diverse. I think Wingspan was a bit more locked into you have three rows and those rows give you food or cards or eggs and Wormspan still has those elements. They still have rows that give you things like resources and cards and caverns, but then they have other things mixed in and the combination of the guild track means you're always getting a variety of goods regardless of which thing you go on. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, because there was a lastly that I had in my head a second ago that it's I'm coming. forgetting. Well, first of all, when you activate the rows, you pay an increasing cost in Wormspan. So you pay one coin the first time, but within a round, you'll pay more and more cost to act to go ahead and explore the same row every single turn. And that's going to be the high level differences. There are a bunch of small nuanced differences, but those are going to be the main things that will stick out of you if you're coming at these knowing both of the games. Mm -hmm. And with that, Meg, do we want to talk about our thoughts? Sure. Um, I am happy that this is a game I got to try at multiple player counts. Usually I get to try games around two to three players and that's it. And this one I got to try it four or five. Four, uh, four and five. Okay, four yeah. and five. And um, I think that that gave me like a really good scope of it, that I was able to learn it with that. That I, I think that this does play well with a lot of player counts. Um, something that I like about Wormspan, or Wingspan, that got transferred into Wormspan, is just your individual player boards where you're using this as your tableau that you're building out. That I really like having just the player board itself, and I think that all of the actions are so clear that it does make it, it's very thinky where you're trying to use all these different resources and so many cards, and then you can draw cards, and what are you going to sacrifice, and what can you hold on to, um, that I... I really enjoy having this big of a personal player board. I think it's fun. So um, this is something that I always liked about Wingspan and never really played with that I really appreciate in Wormspan. Yeah, there's a lot of things to get into here, and we can go back and forth as we will. We're starting off with what we like, and then we'll cover the things we don't like. Uh, but And it's going to be hard to talk about this without relating it to Wingspan. There are enough similarities mm -hmm. in the general arc that it's going to be present. Uh, for context, my thoughts on Wingspan is it's always been a game that I enjoyed without necessarily loving as much as the general population does. It is a well-loved, well-respected game, sold over a million copies, and I think it's a good game. I enjoy playing through it. Uh, we're sent to me, and I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll bury the lead, I think the term is. I'll bury the lead over here. I'll tell you I like Wormspan more than Wingspan. We'll talk about how much more in all the details soon. But it builds off a lot of things that Wingspan did well. Like you mentioned, your personal player board, the ability of your escalating tableau, the fact that your actions get stronger as you go. I like that very much in both these games. I like it in Wormspan. I will say I particularly like the fact that your actions do not decrease in Wormspan. Even though I understand why it happens in Wingspan, the decreasing actions to accommodate for the fact that you're getting stronger, it's still like a feels bad feeling. I like just having that just, just escalate all the way. Balance the whole game around an escalating arc instead of making feel that, making me feel that as I get stronger, I get less actions to benefit from that strength. Mm -hmm. And so I like those coins to begin with. Especially because these tracks uh, get higher in points. So I yep. feel like it's something like that, again, I don't really know Wingspan, but something that where these would get higher and that would also decrease. Yep. Uh, I can't remember whether Wingspan was a progressive arc or not. They, ha yeah. they also have four rounds of scoring, so I know that similarity, but, similar. but I don't remember that, that aspect. I, I very much do like the fact, I touched upon this when I'm doing the teach, but I very much like the fact that the rows feel less locked in. Uh, I would say that in Warspan, I always felt, in Wingspan, whenever I played through Wingspan and focused on, let's say, two rows, I'd always feel that gap of the third row very strongly. I'd be like, I, I don't have any egg engine going on, how do I comment for that? Mm -hmm. And they had a trade in action, but always felt less fun to trade two for one, uh, or to trade two, be able to trade a bonus for another bonus. But in Wingspan, in Warspan, I like it a lot more that you could focus very much on two arcs in this, although I will say by the end of the game, you will get a lot done, but in the first parts of the game, when you are possibly focusing on two rows, 
because of that guild, because of this whole guild engine over here, you always have ways of getting extra things. And the cavern cards as well give you another tool for getting things that you don't otherwise have access to. And I very much appreciate that the game feels less punishing on the things you haven't done, so it gives you more freedom to explore and build out your caverns as you want, while still having all those feel-good moments, but a little less of that restriction around, well, you don't have a card, so you're gonna have to pay through the nose to get cards. You still have that limitation here, but it's much more better managed to have a feel good experience as opposed to feeling that tight economy of the game. Yeah, I would say how I feel and what I think is what you're saying is that I think it's a very satisfying resource management where you do have a tableau of many different ways that you can go to victory and I think that you can plan out what you want to do and kind of adjust to what cards come out and like Alex said, even trying to go up the track to gain the thing you might need as opposed to trying to, you know, waste a turn gaining one resource or something like that. Um, and as you are excavating these uh, caverns and then enticing dragons into them, basically what you'll do is be blocking so that you get to trigger all of these abilities. And I think even the choice of which ones you choose to go for can be very strong, but the top row is resources, the middle row is dragons, and the bottom row is caves. And like the caves are great to give you different things, but I think that instead of making it hard to find one path to victory, they give you so many paths to victory that you just have to find the one that you do best and drives well. Yeah, speaking of paths to victory, speaking of one path to victory, uh, one of my complaints against Wingspan has always been that, especially late game, you focus very much on lay eggs, lay eggs, lay eggs. It's a full action row that just gives you straight up points compared to the other rows that require a bit more of an engine to get those points. And they've removed that concept in Warspan. Now the eggs are in the final column, they're equal distance, and they're not a single row that just straight up gives you points, although the last column in each row does give you a very strong way to get points if you've excavated that far. Mm -hmm. I also think that in Warspan, in Warspan, I find I get a drop more done. You can finish out your entire board. I've done it in some games, but I would say most games I get close to finishing all 12 of my dragons, which for me, Wingspan always felt a drop more constrictive. Wormspan makes me feel like I really have to prioritize how many different dragons do I want. You could go for like just a bunch of cheap dragons, but then you might find that you fill out your tableau too early. So it's a bit more of a, if you've played Evidel, it's a bit more of that kind of a management where it's, you will possibly be able to get all your cards in play, but if you go too cheap, then you'll find that you've burned through all the things you need to do before you get to the end game. So I appreciate that kind of, of balance of the game a bit more as well. Mm -hmm. Anything and else? Uh, yeah, we have oh, yeah. some of the dragons are so cute. Oh my god, I would die for these dragons. I would mother them for the rest of my life. I would do anything but you for them. Pick one or the other. I you would can't feed do both. them my arm if they were hungry. That works. They are so. Some of them are so cute. That's all. Cute dragons. Cute dragons. The hatchlings are fun. I yeah. do like the hatchlings yeah. a lot. And and others. And then there are some that are even fun where there's one that looks kind of like a koi fish. I got this guy over here that's a calm lock serpent and it does look kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. So yeah, the the dragons are beautiful. Anything you don't like about the game? Mm. I do think that it's hard to see what other people are going for and it can be very easy to not keep up. Um, I've played this with multiple player counts multiple ways and I don't love I don't love when you need to be looking at someone's board and being like how many of this do you have how many of that do you have because it, it it doesn't feel great yeah. but I feel like in this game to make sure that you are in the running and scoring points you kind of have to do that so that's the only thing that I didn't really love is that for how you know, playing this with five players with how big your player boards are, unless you're friendly asking, you know, where's everyone at on every objective, then you're kind of just like darting around looking. And I don't know, I, f I felt that distracted me from the game and also made me feel sneaky, not in a good way. You're not wrong. There's a lot of elements in the game going on as far as ways to get extra things. And sometimes it can feel like, how are you, how have you done that much stuff this turn? That can actually happen in the game. And then sometimes you backtrack things and there would be one thing to say, it's all about, you know, oh, well, you're just being paranoid. But practically speaking, across a few games now, we've had those types of things being caught. You're like, oh, wait, no, you did spend that coin there. You forgot to. There's been a lot of like reverse bookkeeping going on that has actually caught things. And so I would say that. But for me, even like a mistake like that, if someone yeah. gets an extra action somewhere, I actually don't care about mm -hmm. that. What I care about is like for these different objectives, for the most shy dragons. Okay, if I'm playing with five people, then I need to look around and see how many mm -hmm. shy dragons oh, everyone gotcha. has, if I should draft one, if I should try to play the ones in my hand, how many more do I need? It's That was more the thing that I didn't like was everyone working towards the objectives or who might take a shy dragon from me for this, so then I need to go for dragons before they take that. And I don't mind strategizing around taking things before other people. You just want to know. But the need to be like, 
What do you have? I don't know, it's just very big. Well then I'll include uh, what I thought you were saying, uh, something that was a problem, which is that bookkeeping aspect. Yeah. That bookkeeping has been present as far as trying to track things and being popular. That I felt may have been a learning thing. Could well be. And, yeah, well that be. I can more forgive for now until I have more plays under my belt. Uh, I'd say for me, one of the things that I didn't love about the original Wingspan that's true here is as much as I enjoy the overall puzzle and ends up trying to gather resources, I still don't have a strong affinity for particular dragons in the game. I mean, I don't find, I find there are a few dragons, those that give you coins or other benefits when you play them, mm -hmm. extra actions are fun, but uh, past that, most of the dragons still feel like, whatever, I'll just deal with the hand I'm dealt with and I'll play around those things. Mm -hmm. I don't have that strong affinity for a specific dragons or specific, mm -hmm. you know, hashlings that I'm like, oh, I need that one. Although I will say, speaking of which, I, I can't speak for the balance of the game at all, but there have certainly been cards that I felt were stronger than other cards, or cards that give you a better bonus for a better return or better points for such a low cost. Mm -hmm. I, again, I can't speak for balance at all. I know Stonemaier both it does do a lot of playtesting of their games, but I also know that they've gotten a lot of feedback on their games as far as how well things are or aren't balanced. Uh, for me, none of it really bothers me in that sense, but it's one of those things where like, sometimes I feel like I'm getting a good dragon or a good cave, something that might be better than something else. Yeah, and I would say, um, especially the last time that we played, yeah. I spent the majority of my game, I had a shy dragon here, okay. and um, it said that it would score a point for every shy dragon around it. So I spent an entire time like waiting for a top row shy one, building out my thing, not getting any further, trying to go for that, and it got me four points. It was the worst decision I could have made, but because I it had a thing good. that worked with things, I was like, oh, I have three shy ones, I'll start trying to do whatever. And yeah, I felt like that, something like that, where it took a lot to do, didn't reward me for how hard it felt to do. Versus there are ones that take not as much to do and give you a pretty decent reward. You like you have a, you right. a dragon that gives you a bunch of extra points, more extra points than that, just for finishing the whole column. And especially if you play on the first row, which is an easy column to fill, you're like, well, that's just a chunk of free points. Right, like if each one of those were one point, and the shy ones are a little bit lower anyway, because they're usually hatchlings, like a large dragon just would have been better. <laughs> yeah. I'll also say that in general, for me, I don't think, you mentioned it plays well to variety of player accounts, and I don't think it, I think it does play well to variety of player accounts, but I would almost exclusively wrap this as a two or three player game. I find that what I get out of extra plays at the table, because it's mostly, there's mostly not much of a contest. There's a contest over points, mm -hmm. and then there's, you know, obviously picking from the pool, and then some of the guild, although this does uh, count for the player count with more spots on different sides. So there are some things you are vying for against the other players, but you also are primarily playing your own engine with some degree of, oh, you took that dragon I wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I get that experience of a two or three player game with less downtime. I will say it has played fast enough, even at five, that I'd be okay with it, especially if all the players knew the game. Mm -hmm. But I'd say for me, two to three players is probably where I'd appreciate it most. And four or five is just like, hey, this is a friendly game that let's play it at a larger player count because we all happen to want to. So it's funny because one of my complaints um, mm -hmm. is that for two players, I think that this was far too static. Interesting. I want to say the last round that we played, the dragons didn't change once. Gotcha. Uh, that so could well be, for yeah. me, for just two player, I didn't like the, how the card movement was. Every other count after that was great, but I actually prefer playing with maybe four people and just to see the variety that comes out and gives you more opportunities as opposed to locking into like those strategies that I said that don't make sense that aren't worth the points that you're trying to do. Makes sense. Anything else you want to cover or final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts are that I really enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun playing it. I would definitely play again, I think, many times. But that being said, I'm not sure if this is one that would stay in my collection forever. I'm going to mirror that nearly identically uh, with caveats and all those things. I'm just going to say the same thing, but longer. Uh, but basically, I I really like Wormspan so far. I'm enjoying Wormspan a lot, and I for sure like it better than Wingspan. Objectively speaking, looking at the things that Wormspan does, it just builds off of the things I liked about Wingspan and fixes the things I didn't like and gives me a better experience that I'm having a lot more fun with. I don't have a way to put a finger on why I like one game more than the other. Sometimes it's in the worse. case... The birds. Well, in the case of no, in the case of Wars of his Wingspan, I can point the oh, fingers oh, to one. Oh, oh, oh. But in the case of there are there are so many card building tableau games, and a lot of them I really love. And this one I like a lot more than Wingspan. I'm enjoying it a lot. It could be a game that stays in my collection for a long time. I don't know for sure. It's for sure staying for right now. I like this one a lot. It does good things, but like something about it, like. I don't know what it is exactly. It still doesn't have me hooked on the magic while very much appreciating what it's doing. And like, I'm down to play this again and again and again and continue to go through it and try the different guilds and see the different like dragons. It may be like you were saying that attachment to the different dragons where this is so randomized and kind of just doing the best with everything you have. Whereas yeah. I feel like some games like Lost Ruins of Arnak, you yes. know the cards and you're like, 
this is able to be bought, I am buying that. I'm getting a donkey. So that's Let's something, go. that's what I've always so. said. And not to harp in, if you've watched my content enough, you've seen me compare Everest, Everest, Everdell, and Wingspan. But like something I've always said is when you play games like Everdell, of Vindication, or Lost Sons of Arnak, I, I learn to recognize and identify the cards, and those are the ones that are helpful. Like, oh, the pistol, I need the pistol. Is it a revolver? I think it's a revolver. In Lost Sons of Arnak, it's the revolver. You see, like, even that difference, even the fact that I can I say it's one. the revolver, and you know what it does and how it operates, I find many games give me that affinity for the cards that I appreciate them so much. When I'm playing Terraforming Mars, I know specific cards. I'm like, oh, that one, the space elevator. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. There's so many of these things that I have. <laughs> We're going off another game now. But for whatever reason, the one the one negative thing about Wingspan that carries over to Warspan for me is I still just don't care about the cards. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that the uh, Chameleon Quaddle is going to give me that, or the Ravenous Granite Dragon is going to do this, or the Greater Scorpio is going to do that. They all just do what they do and I'll work around them. So I find that I don't have, and I know some people do. I've had people comment like, oh no, I do feel that way about Wingspan. Great. I don't have that yet. Mm -hmm. And so I really, really like this. It is a strong improvement over Wormstand. I really like it a lot. Like for me, rating wise, I'm gonna give this a four out of five. I like it a lot. It's a very solid game. It could continue to grow over time or it may remain static. Either way, I wanna continue playing through it and exploring it. And I could see this one sticking around forever. I could also see it leaving in six months. And I just don't know which way that one goes. But definitely a strong recommendation. And also for those who don't know if it, if it does leave, it's only because there are so many great games that do this for me that's just fighting in a very contested area. But mm -hmm. this is an easy recommendation for me. I think I'd give it a four as well. Yeah. And as far... Are you rating? I think maybe. Ooh. I'm used to just not rating in these videos. I know. Cool. Uh, as far as I other game... I was just going to surprise everybody. As far as other game recommendations, do you want to give any uh, recommendations? Wingspan. No. <laughs> Um, you go first because I forgot we do that. Uh, so generally I just go with other games that might be a fit for you and I'll just cover things we've already said, which is I do think if you've played this game and enjoyed it or if you're looking for other similar games, I do think checking out Evidel or Evidel Farshore are both, I mean, once you're playing with the offshoots, let's go with Evidel Farshore. Evidel mm -hmm. Farshore is going to be a recommendation of another game to check out that will give you a similar arc and feeling while being very different in its own right. I think they're both fantastic. I definitely recommend checking that out. Yeah, and it came up while I've done the channel, but I think Terraforming Mars is a good one where you're chaining different cards and trying to find ones that work together um that is one that i think feels very similar to this but i was just gonna say something else and then it gone it's gone it's gone it's gone i'll Forever. comment it you guys yeah. i'll pin it that's basically it <laughs> that has been your review of Wormspan from stonemaier games a solid improvement over the original for me i say that as somebody who recognizes Wormspan, wingspan is already well loved but for me this is definitely i, I like what they do with it i like what they do with it yeah until next time i'm alex rath from board game co i'm professor Mank. and have a good one bye oh it was dune imperium Another one that this kind of reminds me of, Alex has already left, but I turned the camera back on, it's Dune Imperium. Um, it's not similar whatsoever, but the vibe of looking around at everyone and trying to weigh out what choices they're making and what you need to draft away from them and not only help yourself, but be afraid of everybody else with escalating points, um, it, it kind of reminded me of Dune. That's all. Bye!